everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Kirsty, aka okay, Beth Bookish, and these are the worst and most disappointing books of 2023. I usually do these as like two separate videos. I usually do like a worst DNFs and like least favourite disappointing, but I kind of want to reduce the amount of negativity so I thought I'd condense it into one video and then for DNFs I'm going to do a separate video next year where I'm going to look at series and books that I'm DNFing and why and things so I'll talk about those there. I am splitting this video kind of into two categories because there is a difference between the worst and the most disappointing. The worst are the ones that were just all round bad. They were poorly written, they had crappy characters, the plot was terrible, all of those kind of fun lovely things and then most disappointing are obviously the ones where you know they just didn't quite live up to it, I was really looking forward to them maybe, they ended really badly and but the writing and stuff was still good it just let me down in some kind of way. I want to start off with the disappointing ones before we really start getting salty. The only one on here that was both a disappointment and was a DNF is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. I have since decided I might give it another go, maybe it was just my headspace, maybe I need to listen to it on audio, but I got so bored. I was really enjoying it. It started off so well and then by the time we got to the end of part one I was bored and it felt like a chore to pick it back up every day and I was just I wasn't enjoying it anymore and so I decided to put it down in I think April and I haven't wanted to pick it back up again but because I own the duology I do kind of want to try so I've said I'm going to try the audiobook next year but yeah it just it bored me I was the pacing was not there I was bored. Next up we have the first book of the year and that was Hooked by A.C. Wise. First and foremost, nowhere did it say, either on the book or on Goodreads, until after I'd read it, that it is actually book two in a series. Nothing anywhere said this. So I started reading it, I was confused as hell. I then found out that it is technically book two, and a lot of other people fell for the same thing that I fell for, thinking that it was a standalone. And so obviously I was very confused throughout. It was making reference to a book I'd not read, and also I just found I wasn't enjoying the storyline anyway um, because the elements with the previous book came in towards the end but all throughout I just wasn't enjoying the atmosphere, I wasn't enjoying, enjoying the characters, I was bored. The only thing that redeemed it was the relationship between Hook and I can't remember the love interest but that was interesting but the rest of it was just so nonsensical, didn't make any kind of relation and apart if it you weren't told it was Peter Pan you wouldn't have realized it was Peter Pan and Peter Pan himself wasn't even in it no <laughs> so yeah that one just really disappointed me especially as I have the thing every year I start the year with a new author and it just didn't start great then we have Persepolis by Miana Stra Strapture I can't remember and with this one I was disappointed because I was expecting to get a lot more about what it's like to live in a conflict country and the impacts that it had on the country and instead it turned into what uh, it sounds horrible but it came across more like a whiny 12 year old's journal than it did a, an insightful look into the impacts of war and I really the first half was fine the second half just was a real struggle and I've seen a lot of people have had the same experience as me where the second half of the book it just it almost felt unnecessary and focus more on how amazing she is as a person and look how badass I am and it's like mm, I don't know it was just not great. Next up we have My Love Mix Up Volume 1 by Wataru Hinakure. This one was only a disappointment in that I was really excited for the storyline. The storyline was fine but the art style, I don't like it. When they're not, I know all 
all manga has that kind of style where it goes exaggerated and silly but this took it to extreme levels and at really weird times it would just change the style for no reason and it was like oh that just kind of doesn't really fit with everything and when it does go silly just the expressions it pulls were just awful I didn't like it but I have said I will at least give the second volume a try before I give up the series Another manga was given by Natsume, no, Natsuki Kizu. <sighs> Again, one I really wanted to like. I was looking forward to the whole, like, talking about the music and the dynamics of the band, and I can't even remember what was in this. It was forgettable, it was a bit bland. The ca None of the characters, apart from, like, this guy, he caught my attention, but none of the rest did, and just... I have no interest in continuing, which is a shame because I really love music um, based manga and anime. Next up we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This one kind of disappointed me because it pissed me off. The main character was absolutely abhorrent. The love interest said one comment and invited her to go to the gym with him because he was busy, needed to go to the gym. He asked her if she wanted to come with him and she just absolutely flipped her shit accusing like didn't even say anything out loud just internally flipped herself was like oh he wants me to change he's fat phobic he's this he's that and it was like calm the shit down love he he literally just was inviting you to go and spend the day with him he wasn't forcing you into gym clothes and if he felt that way about you he wouldn't have had sex with you get over yourself and I just spent the whole of the book and I didn't like the fact that the book started with him lying about his identity and it's like as you know miscommunication biggest no-no for me but the reason this one isn't in the worst books is because there were some redeemable moments and eventually they did grow up and become adults and talk about it and it worked out but yeah there were a few things and I also did not like the ADHD rep in this book and it put me off continuing the series then we have Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. This is the final book in the Geekerella well, Once Upon a Con series. This one was so disappointing because all of the magic from the first book was gone. It at no point, well, anytime something exciting was happening, it then dissolved. None of the characters were particularly great. And then it decided to bring in a side story very vaguely with the original characters in the first book and then didn't really explain anything. And it was just kind of like, oh, so we're just going to gloss over that huge thing that's just happened and not go back. And it just felt like a massive letdown to the series. And it didn't feel like it actually wrapped up the series. It still left a lot of questions and I felt like either a, nov a final book or a novella with all of the characters wrapping up where they're at now and what's been going on would have been better than what we got. And that was the final one for the disappointing books. Now, so if I'm that salty over disappointments, how are we going to go with the out and out dislike? Well, let's go through the uh, books that I feel are the worst. These are the books I genuinely think should either not have been published or I don't really see why they're as popular as they are or just were really bad in various ways and I'm kickstarting this with the song of Yoru and Asa again another one I thought that was going to be a cutesy romance involving musicians and was going to have a really lovely storyline maybe a bit of drama a little bit of conflict did not expect it to turn into essay and graphic depiction, depictions of violence and a guy that was obsessed with one of the singers and kind of kidnapped him and tortured him. I was like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And there was like a lot of forced stuff. There was, like I said, there was assault in there. There was, and I was just not expecting it to go anywhere near as well as it was. And it was also really all over the place. The writing wasn't great. The characters were very unexplained. Didn't have a good time. Think I gave it two stars. Just... Just no, no. Then we have one that I do not understand why it's so popular and why this author has been almost deitized, and that is Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. Love Hypothesis was great. I had a fantastic time. I think I gave it five stars. I really had fun. I loved it. This one was just really badly written. The characters were pretty much exactly the same as before. As in, like, he's big, she's tiny, and we have to know every other page. The... When it did go into smart, 
it was like for me it was the most vile smut it made me feel physically sick and i was like i'm not in in this and yeah i just i didn't like the fact that they threw in a random disability that was there just for plot purposes and was kind of mocked and laughed at rather than treated as this woman is having fainting spells there is something seriously wrong and you're laughing at her and yeah it just was so badly written the ending was hilariously comical in the twist that it took and I was just like this is absolute trash writing and I do not understand how anyone thinks that she is a fantastic writer when so far everything I've heard since is that she basically just repeats the same formula over and over and over again and has no variation and I'm like I just I hated it I absolutely hated it and it made Shah quite amused because she was loving it. Well, she enjoyed it and I hated it. And she was just loving how my rants were going. <laughs> then we have the Ogre's, Pat, Ogre's Pet by Cassandra Cross. The least I say about this, the better. I recently did a Monster Smut video where I talked about the Monster Smut. And this one was just bad. And the that bone on the cover, as I said in that vlog, this book gave a whole new meaning to the word getting boned. So it was no. Even without that, it was just really badly written and it had no plot and it had no kind of world building and it vaguely was like, oh, we know not to go into the forest and there's an ogre in the forest, but why when you're in a normal world? Yeah. Like, no. Then we have Christmas Honeymoon for one, which is one that I actually read this month and uh, really didn't enjoy it because... To start with, we had the main love interest. His eyes were described four times as green, but various shades of green. So we got told he had green eyes about 12 times. And it's only a 120 page book. So it was only like, you know, teeny tiny. And we got told multiple, multiple times that he had green eyes. But he had jade green eyes. He had pine green eyes. He had light green eyes and dark green eyes. Pick one. Those four things are all very different shades, but it was just choose one shade and stick with it. Also, why do we need to know so often what colour his eyes were, are when we don't even know what the main female's eyes colour is except dark? And every tiny thing that this main character did, like the love interest, every tiny thing that he did, it was based on what his dead girlfriend would have wanted him to do. Not once did it occur to him to do things that he wanted to do. And he was constantly having this monologue of, I'll show him that I'm my friend, that I'm getting over her and that I'm moving on. But I, and I, I am moving on. I'm fine. And then in the next sentence was like, I can't move on. I can't let her go. She's mine. And it's like, dude, you literally, a sentence earlier would say in how you're fine and over. And now you're saying you couldn't live with her without her. I just, it was awful. The main female as well. I can't tell you anything about her other than she can sing. There was no personality. There was nothing there. We learn that her fiance left her just before the wedding, but we don't know the circumstances. We don't know the situation. We don't know the fallout of that. How close to the wedding was it? There was just so much missing and it just, it was terrible. I hate, I, I kind of like sort of rage read it by the end. <laughs> then we had The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. I just thought that all of the characters were shit. I didn't accept a lot of what happened and the fact that they made light of stalking and they thought that it was amusing that this guy was stalking the person that they were going to see and they kind of just were like, oh yeah, we're just going to continue travelling with him even after we find out he is a stalker rather than call the police. A series of events happen on the way to there that are unbelievable at best, ludicrous at worst and it's just... It took them like from Kent to Scotland. It took them like two days. And I'm just like, really? Because conveniently, none of them had money to get on a train. None of them had money to do this. Like all these adult working professionals, none of them had money with them. Or phone chargers or insurance. I <laughs> No. So yeah, that one really, really annoyed me. And then it was whole, like, she was like, oh, I still love him. It's like, bitch, you were sexually assaulted and he threw you out because he 
didn't believe you and you're taking him back. You need a therapist. Like, what the hell? And then I just realised I've just flashed it, but my worst book by far of the year, and I am saying it now, and I, you don't need the book awards in a couple of weeks to tell you that the worst book of the year for me, and the most disappointing, this was, was In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. This is one of the books that I was the most hyped for this year. It was in my top three of, like, most anticipated. And it was so bad. You have an asexual main character, and yet you build almost the entirety of the plot and the world around sex and sexual things. And it kind of felt like TJ Klune was mocking asexuals. Like, I don't know, it just felt very kind of insulting towards asexuals. And considering many asexuals would want to read this because of that asexual rep, it would make them uncomfortable. And it did, it made me uncomfortable. I'm okay with the occasional innuendo, don't get me wrong. But this took it absolutely too far and then when it started to criticize the character and started to suggest that maybe the character could change because he finally found someone that he was in love with and it's like B -b 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 and it was like saying oh yeah you know you can be cured from being asexual because you just need to find someone and just do it and it was like mm -mm. didn't appreciate it the writing was bad the plot was terrible and nonsensical and then the big reveal where it was like, oh, gasp, shocker. It was like, yeah, I worked that out in like page three. <laughs> it was complete. There was nothing shocking, nothing unusual. The most shocking thing about this book was how disappointingly bad it was. And yeah, just considering I've loved Clune's work until now, and one of his other books is going to be featured in my best books of the year. This just was trash. I hated it. Yeah. I don't recommend it and I am currently, I have decided to sell this copy because there's no point in me holding, as beautiful as it is, there's no point in me holding onto a book that I think is actual poop. So there you have it. I will be back again tomorrow with the opposite side of this video, which are the best books of the year. So <laughs> prepare for some more positivity. Um, but yeah, those were my worst and most disappointing books of the year. Let me know in the comments if you have picked out a worst book of the year so far and let me know what it is or if you agree with any of these. Obviously, these are my opinions. These are not fact. If you highly disagree with me, feel free to say that you disagree. Just don't try, like, don't come at me. Don't start insulting me. Don't take these opinions of mine as personal attacks on you. I don't tolerate those kind of things. I will report you. I will block you. So just, if you're going to reply to these and if you want to disagree, just keep it respectful. That's all I ask. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you have a worst book of the year or a most disappointing book of the year. And I will see you tomorrow for a much happier me where I will be talking through my favourite books of the year. So go check that out tomorrow. I hope you're all good. I hope you stay safe. And until tomorrow, 